Hello Internet! My name is Daniel. It sure is hard growing up with an apostrophe in your name for like scantrons and stuff. O'Brien. And welcome to another forgettable episode of Obsessive Pop Culture Disorder. The only show on the internet that is called that, I think. When we came up with the show, we didn't have lawyers yet, so we didn't look into things like titles. So someone else could easily own the trademark. Today's thing is... Today's thing? I have no idea why it's so important to me to pretend I don't put work into this show. I'm not sure it adds to the charm. Anyway, The Wizard of Oz. Even if you've never watched the 1939 classic The Wizard of Oz, you're probably familiar with its plot and characters. Dorothy, a lonely Kansas farm girl who counts middle-aged farmhands and a dog as her only friends, bumps her head during a tornado and passes out. While sleeping, she has what most of us would consider a traumatizing nightmare in which she... Oh yeah, we should have a title card. In which she casts herself as an unwitting murderer not once, but twice. Three times, if you count what she did to fashion by wearing socks with pumps. Does that count as a fashion murder? I don't know. I'm not the authority, because below this desk, I'm wearing a bathing suit. But it seems like it's probably a fashion crime of some kind. Her first episode of Manslaughter happens when her house lands on the Wicked Witch of the East. A living, breathing, humanish person whose death immediately prompts a joyful song about how she's totally dead and burning in hell now. Manslaughter number two happens when Dorothy accidentally throws water on the Wicked Witch of the East sister, the Wicked Witch of the West. Because I guess if you have siblings, your Wizard of Oz name is the one adjective you share with your siblings plus the most basic thing that you are, plus your location relative to your brothers and sisters, which I suppose makes me sweaty boy West Coast. Mmm. I have lots of nicknames and that's not even in the top 10 of the worst. Anyway, water, it turns out, was WWW's only allergy and she promptly melts and it's terrifying. Take it from me, old splash mouth. Her death is also greeted with cheers because the only other person who loved her is decomposing under a house in Munchkinland. Sidebar. I know there was a series of books and a huge musical that humanizes the witches, or Elphaba and Nessa as they came to be known, but no one was thinking about that when they made this movie. They were just like, these witches because I hate them. I sure hope no one retroactively makes them sympathetic when we're dead and that's messed up and we should talk about it but we won't because there's another title card coming. Before we get into color and munchkin land, Dorothy gets upset because her beloved dog Toto bites a mean neighbor, Ms. Gulch, and Gulch is like, you gotta kill that f***ing dog. Here's a letter from the sheriff that says so. That's for the sheriff to decide. Here's his order allowing me to take him. But you want to go against the law. And I agree that the neighbor is awful, and the audience is supposed to agree as well, which is why she is the analog for the main witch in Oz. But like, you can't have dogs biting people. That's a law we still have. Certainly, if my perfect dog bit some jerk and they were like, put it in my basket so I could take it to the sheriff to be destroyed, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, one second, but first, real quick, uh, get f***ed. And then I'd run away, and my dog and I would change our identities, but the law is definitely the law. Toto bit that woman. And the main reason I bring up Toto is that we spend the whole movie in Oz with Dorothy's adventures and then she comes back to the real world and everything's okay because it was just a dream, except except the dog stuff, right? Except Ms. Gulch still wants to murder her dog, right? You know, the inciting incident of the movie? That doesn't get resolved just because Dorothy got her head bashed in. They're still gonna kill that dog. If most of the movie was supposed to be a dream, the only real parts we have are Dorothy's dog bit a woman who owns half the county, and it's an issue. But still, that's not even the biggest problem I have with the movie, and plot twist, this is barely even about what happened in the movie. Joining Dorothy in her imaginary technicolor escape from justice are the three men who work on her family farm, now dressed up like freaks. Her choice of companions are problematic in my book, but I'll get to that in a minute. The real problem with The Wizard of Oz is that Dorothy's dream was never meant to be a dream at all. When L. Frank Baum wrote The Wizard of Oz, he played it straight, as in, Dorothy really did travel to Oz and met a scarecrow, lion, and tin man, and those three friends weren't just lazy analogs for the adult men in her life. Magic was real. It was MGM, the studio behind the movie, who looked at the box office numbers behind recent fantasy movies and decided audiences needed their witch and wizard stories grow it in reality. So they settled on the tired old Alice in Wonderland, it was all a dream ending. Why was this a big deal? In one two minute scene, the studio stripped Dorothy of her entire adventure and turned her into a crazy person. Yeah, she got quite a bump on the head. We kind of thought that for a minute she was going to leave us. Oh, but I did leave you, Uncle Henry. That's just the trouble. And I tried to get back for days and days. There, there, lie quiet now. You just had a bad dream. Sure. Without the dream, Dorothy is Luke Skywalker, Harry Potter, and E.T. rolled into one. And she was conceived in print before most Americans had flushing toilets in their homes. Without the dream, she's a real deal witch slaughterer who traveled on foot across a country that no one in her world had ever seen before. She built a team of fellow adventurers, exposed a fraudulent leader, and liberated two different races of Oz dwellers from bondage. She even survived a heroin overdose. Here, Tin Man, help me! Oh. Oh, this is terrible! Turn her whole story into a dream, and we've got problems. For one thing, this teenage girl passes out, wakes up, and blurts out that the three men who work on her aunt and uncle's farm were with her in her dream. And you, and you, and you, 
And you were there. Oh, <laughs> Not her aunt or her uncle, just their work hands. So, that's a sex dream, right? Ooh, you know the farm hand? Well, I had this crazy dream where I helped get him a heart on and he loved it. <sighs> Even if we take the high road and dismiss the obvious, indisputable fact that Dorothy's whole adventure in Oz was a sexual awakening, there are much bigger problems at play with her story becoming a dream sequence. The first is that everyone in the room laughs at her when she tells them where she went. All I kept saying to everybody was, I wanna go home. And they sent me home. <laughs> When she asks, doesn't anybody believe me? Her uncle answers, of course we believe you, with the enthusiasm of a wet sock. Doesn't anybody believe me? Of course we believe you, Dorothy. In the next breath, Dorothy gives up believing her dream was real, cheerfully exclaiming, but anyway, Toto, we're home, and announces, I'm not ever going to leave here ever, ever again. Or, you know, that line, but with a reasonably convincing Judy Garland impression. I'm better at guy voices. Oh, but anyway, Toto, we're home, and I'm not going to leave here ever, ever again. The book ends with Dorothy landing back home, hugging her aunt and saying, I'm so glad to be at home again. The movie ends with Dorothy professing her undying love for her home, like her house is a new god that needs her exclamations of loyalty. Now, everyone but our camera operator, take a step back and think about who was in those first audiences watching Dorothy accept that her death-defying romp through Oz was just a fantasy and being at home is all that matters. It may have been 1939, but I'm guessing the seats were filled with the same kinds of people who go to family movies today, moms and kids. But these weren't just any moms. In a few short years, the moms in the Oz audiences would be asked to do something that no generation of women had ever done before. Get out of the house and start working for the good of the country. That's right, it's a feminism and a war thing. You thought I was just making fun of a perfect movie because I'm weird? Well, guess what? I am, but I'm also passionate and preachy. By 1944, there were over 19 million women in American factories, shipyards, and offices, presumably riveting everything they could get there more weathered than my current hands-on. But when their husbands and boyfriends and brothers came back from World War II, the ladies were sent home so the vets could have jobs. In other words, they got dorothy After learning how to build cool stuff and manage the home front while the men were away, women got the message that their adventure was over and home was where they belonged. And one of the first people to give them that message was Dorothy herself. America got one mainstream fantasy heroine through most of the 20th century, and some nameless executive not only turned her whole hero's journey into a make-believe story in her head, but they also landed her exactly where she started with no lessons learned other than stay home forever. Also, and I need to point this out, this is one of my favorite obsessive pop culture disorder observations in a while, and I think the obvious reason behind that is that I didn't come up with this one. Christy Harrison wrote this because she watches Wizard of Oz and thinks, have you considered how studio executive turns what was a feminist hero story into propaganda to keep women out of the workforce after the war? And I watch Wizard of Oz and think, flying monkeys, I'd like a flying monkey. If I had one, I'd name it Walter. That's the most I've ever thought about this movie. Anyway, Christy, what was that? There was a war, you say? Get right out of town. Christy should be doing this video instead of me, but she can't because she's busy doing literally the exact same nine to five jobs as me while also raising three children. I'm the guy who gets to say, God, it's exhausting coming up with another OPCD every month. And Christy, legitimately emailed me to say, hey, I found some free time and wrote this thing that might work for your show if you need it. Christy is talented and thoughtful and supportive, and you should all have a Christy in your life. Women! Anyway, uh, that's it for this month. Join us next week when our topic will be... She's... Christy said what about me? She thinks she can take my job? Well, guess what, honey? I got... Bye. I got news for you. You are a serpent. You are a duplicitous snake, Christy. Your kids are bullshit too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for watching that video. Make sure you click the big C in the middle to subscribe. Check out any of the videos to my left, your right, if you want to watch them. Uh, click on that stupid YouTube bell if you want to get notifications when our videos come out. And you know the rules. In the comments, put what your Wizard of Oz name would be.